Lesser thanks. A federal judge on Friday ruled the so-called morning after pill should be available to women of all ages without a prescription. Currently, anyone under 17 needs that doctor's order. The change could go into effect in a month, though not everyone agrees with the ruling. Dr. Laura Corio. There is some division in terms of this ruling. The FDA, several medical groups, including the American Academy of Pediatrics, have long recommended no restriction here. Uh, we know at least one anti-abortion group is calling this reckless. What does this ruling really mean? 11 to sort of set the scene. Well, imagine this 11-year-old girl. There is some concern that maybe this sends the wrong message about sex. It, my understanding, about 75% effective. Yes. Obviously, it, it should not be used most people would agree, as birth control. Is there any concern, though, for a health risk? This is a concentrated dose of hormones, exactly. especially for a young girl. I think that... Well, that education, not only with your, with your young patients, but with their parents. I think, you know, the parents have to be open. You have to know your children. Thanks Thank for your you. insight. Once again, here's Lester. The Silence of the Lambs was one of the most shocking thrillers. Drama Hannibal takes us back to the beginning of his story, when he's known as just a psychiatrist. Hugh Dancy plays one of his patients, an FBI profiler who's tortured by a special ability to think like the serial killers he searches for. Nice to have you with us this morning. You play this, um, this FBI profiler mm -hmm. who's sort of empathetic. So what's it like for you as an actor? I mean, I imagine it's a great role, but at the same mm -hmm. time, is it mildly disconcerting to then go home at the end of the day and be dad? <laughs> uh, too, no, right? yeah, then, then I go home and I have a break. Yeah. <laughs> a nice normal part. Yeah. It is very, it's been described as an elegant horror story mm -hmm. and it is, it's, it's graphic, but it's tough to turn away from. I guess it's graphic. Is that a dark place? No, the set is, it's, it's good stuff. Yeah, really well written, obviously mm -hmm. great acting. Um, so you just wrapped, though, yes. this season. So now you have a little bit of a break. Yes. You have a three and a half month old son. That is correct. Any yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice to have you with us this morning. Thank you Thank very you. much. Yeah. You can catch Hannibal on. We all know the importance of getting enough sleep, but we rarely get as much as we need. Erica recently blogged about that for the Huffington. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. And had touched some, a lot of nerves. I've right? had some really, really nice feedback on it, and I was, um, I was excited to do it. Ariana Huffington, who uh, founded the Huffington Post, is a big sleep advocate. And so we had been talking about sleep over the last couple of years, and she asked me if I would write about it. And that's because I made a little job change a few months ago um, when I came to NBC. And prior to that, I, I had three months at home, which is, which is rarer than any of us get three months to spend with our families um, when we're not working. And I really kind of reclaimed my sleep and realized that as much as I knew I needed sleep, I had been existing on so little for so long, like so many people do, um, that I, so many things in my life had, had gone not the way I wanted them to, mainly, the, you know, the way I was acting around my kids. What's I was a, impatient. What's, what's a good night's sleep for you? Um, I would say a good night's sleep for me now is six hours. <laughs> really? Six hours? Six, no, that's not that's like three nights for me. Oh. That's, <laughs> wow. I try and with this one coming along, I'm a little worried. You have your two. Yeah. We're going to have sleep boot camp. Yeah. I need all those. <laughs> the entire sleep scheduled for the first week of November. Still to come on today, new signs of increasing tension with North and South Korea. For more than five years, Brian Banks wore a prison uniform after being convicted of a crime he always maintained he did not commit. Soon, though, he's going to suit up in a new uniform for the Atlanta Falcons. Jenna's back with more on this story, and this is his dream come true. This is an unbelievable story. So it, it's been quite a run for years now for Banks. Now he's getting a second chance at making his childhood dreams come true. That's such yeah. a great story. Jenna, thanks. Now here's Lester. Clicked on viral videos, plus a couple you may have missed. Jenna's here to run them all down for us. All right, we got a lot to get to. There's some good ones okay. here. The first one you may have already seen, but if you haven't, this one is new to you. Check out this guy, known for his pranks. Are the police, that's going to be fun. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, how about this one? I like this one. This is um, a traffic stop in Russia, but we doubt anyone ever underestimated how hard it must be to drive an armor tank uh, that looks like a car. That's true. Driving across <laughs> it's the true. street. So. It's true. Uh, I also want to introduce you to my future child. This oh. one? Well, no. This one. Very nice. Right? So we know what to get you for a shower gift. A cheating or a baby gift. A cheating <laughs> We'll get you that little. Oh, yeah. yes. I'm not putting A and B together because, yes. But I, don't know, I thought that was cute. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, we'll be right back with first these messages.